Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia World Videos. This chapter will be untitled Public Expenditure. Along this chapter we are going to talk about the meaning and importance of public expenditure, their causes for the increase, the classification of public expenditure, theories of growth of public expenditure. After that we are going to talk about the canons or principles of public expenditure, the effects of public expenditure on production particularly, and by the end we are going to present some model questions. So let's get started. What does public expenditure mean? In fact, the expenses incurred by the governments for its own maintenance, preservation and, and welfare of the economy as a whole is referred to as public expenditure. In other words, it refers to the expenses of public authorities, central, state and local governments in a federation for the satisfaction of collective needs of the citizens or for promotion of economic and social welfare. The development functions include education, public health, social security, roads, irrigation, canal, buildings and so on. The major cause of increase in the public expenditure is nothing bad. These development, developmental functions, hence the study of public expenditure, has become very significant in the study of public finance. The two major reasons for the same are a. The economic activities of the state has increased manifold and b. The nature and volume of public expenditure have greatly affected the economic life of the country in a different manner, that is to say, it has affected production and distribution and general level of economic activities. In the laissez-faire era, the state was assigned a very limited role to play. The functions assigned to the state were based on the principle of least interference or that government is the best which spends the least. According to the classical school led by Adam Smith, restricted the functions of the state to justice, police and arms. They considered government expenditure wasteful and that money could be used much well by private persons than by the government. Adam Smith, in his book The Wealth of Nations, published in 1776, observed that the sovereign has three main duties to perform, as to protect the society from violence and invasion of other independent societies, b to protect against injustice, and c. Erecting and maintaining certain public works. According to David Ricardo, if you want a peaceful government, you must reduce the budget. In recent time, public expenditure has been increased enormously. The main reason is that the functions of governments have been increased manifold. The modern states are no more police states but welfare states. Adolf Wagner, a German economist, presented his famous law of increase of states' activities. He states that comprehensive comparison of different countries and different times show that among progressive people with which alone we are concerned, an increase regularly takes place in the activity of both central and local government. This increase is both, is both intensive and extensive. Professor Masgrave, the 20th century economist, advocated public expenditure since a government is forced to do many activities such as activities to secure a reallocation of resources, redistribution activities, stabilizing activities and commercial activities. Governments constantly undertake new functions while they perform both old and new functions more efficiently and completely. In this way, the economic needs of the people to an increasing extent and in a satisfactory fashion are satisfied by the central and local governments. Now let's focus on the causes for the increase in public expenditure. One of the most important features of the present century is the phenomenal growth of public expenditure. Some of the important reasons for the growth of public expenditure are the following. 1. The welfare state. 
modern states are no more police states. They have to look in the welfare of the masses for which the state has to perform a number of functions. They have to create and undertake employment opportunities, social security measures, and other welfare activities. All these require enormous expenditure. Two, the defense expenditure. Modern war warfare is very expensive. Wars and possibilities of wars have forced the nation to be always equipped with arms. This causes great amount of public expenditure. Three, growth of democracy. The form of democratic government is highly expensive. The conduct of elections, maintenance of democratic institutions like legislatures, etc. cause great expenditure. And four, growth of population. Tremendous growth of population necessities, enormous spending on the part of the modern governments. For meeting the needs of the growing population, more educational institutions, food materials, hospitals, roads and amenities of life are to be provided. 5. Rise in price level. Rises in prices have considerably enhanced public expenditure in recent years. Higher prices mean higher spending on the part of the government, on items like payment of salaries, purchase of goods and services, and so on. 6. The expansion of public sector. Countries aiming at socialistic pattern of society have to give more importance to public sector. Consequent development of public sector enhances public expenditure. 7. The development of expenditure. For implementing de de developmental programs like five-year plans, modern governments are incurring huge expenditure. 8. Public debt. Along with debt rises the problem like payment of interest and repayment of the principal amount. This results in an increase in public expenditure. 9. Grants and loans to state governments and duties. It is an important feature of public expenditure of the central government of India. The government provides assistance in the forms of grants in aid and loans to the states and to the duties. Finally, poverty alleviation programs. As the poverty ratio is high, huge amount of expenditure is required for implementing alleviation programs. Very good. Now let's talk about the classification of public expenditure. In fact, public expenditure has been classified into revenue expenditure and capital expenditure. The revenue expenditure is current expenditure. For example, it includes administrative expenditure and maintenance expenditure. This expenditure is of a recurring type. Capital expenditure is of capital nature and is incurred once for all. It is non-recurring expenditure. For example, expenditure in building, multi-purpose projects, or on setting up big factories like steel plants, money spent on land, machinery and equipment. Revenue budget or revenue account is related to current financial transactions of the government which are the recurring nature. Revenue budget consists of the revenue receipts of the government and the expenditure is met from this revenues. Revenue account deals with taxes, duties, fees, fines and penalties revenue from government estates, receipts from government commercial concerns and other items, and the expenditure therefore. Revenue receipts include receipts from taxation, profits of enterprise, other non-tax receipts like administrative revenue, gifts, grants, and so on. Revenue expenditure includes interest payments, defined expenditure, major subsidies, pensions, and so on. The capital account is related to the acquisition and disposal of capital assets. Capital budget is a statement of estimated capital receipts and payments of the government over fiscal year. 
It consists of capital receipts and capital expenditure. The capital account deals with expenditure usually met from borrowed funds with the object of increasing concrete assets of a material character or of reducing recurring liabilities such as construction of buildings, irrigation projects, and so on. Capital receipts include borrowings, recovery of loans and advances, disinvestments, and small savings. Capital expenditure includes developmental outlay, non-developmental outlay, loans and advances, and discharge of debts. Now, let's have a focus on the theories of growth of public expenditure. As we know, in modern times, all the countries of the world have witnessed an enormous increase in public expenditure. The three important theories of the growth of public expenditure are the following. Adolf Wagner's hypothesis, Wiesmann-Picot hypothesis, and Colin Clark's critical limit hypothesis. So let's start by Adolf Wagner's hypothesis. Adolf Wagner believed that there was a cause-effect relationship between economic growth and public expenditure. His hypothesis of law of increasing state activity lays that as a per capita income and output increased in industrialized countries, the public expenditure of those countries necessarily grows as a proportion to total economic activity. He explained that comprehensive comparisons of different countries and different times shows that among progressive people with which alone we are concerned, an increase regularly takes place in the activity of both central and local governments. The increase is both extensive and intensive. The central and local governments constantly undertake new functions while they perform both old and new functions more effectively and completely. He explained the trend of public expenditure. He concluded that as the national income increases in amount, the percentage of outlay for government supplied goods in is greater, and that increased public expenditure was the natural result of economic growth and continued pressure for social progress. According to Wiesman and Peacock, public expenditure does not increase in a smooth and continuous manner. The increasing public expenditure over time has occurred in a step-like manner. They study the experience of the United Kingdom for a secular period. Instead of studying the trend of public expenditure, they study the fluctuations in government expenditure over time. The general approach to the hypothesis refers to the three related concepts. 1. Displacement effect. 2. Inspection effect. And 3. Concentration effect. The movement from older level of expenditure and taxation to a new and higher level is called the displacement effect. War and other social disturbances force the people and governments to find solutions of important problems which had been neglected earlier. This is called the inspection effect, that is, new obligations imposed on state in the form of increased debt, interest and war pensions, etc. The concentration effect refers to the appearing tendency for the central government, economic activities to become an increasing proportion of the total public sector economic activity when the society is experiencing economic growth. The hypothesis was developed by Colin Clark immediately after the Second World War. It is concerned with the tolerance level of taxation. By maximum limit of the tolerance level is 25% of the GNP, when the share of government expenditure exceeds 25% in the GNP inflation occurs even in balanced budget. Now let's talk about the canons of public expenditure. 
The canons or principles of public expenditure are the fundamental rules which govern the public expenditure policy of the government. The method and direction in which the public expenditure utilized is of paramount amount importance. Professor Alfred Bachelor made some guidelines for the utilization of expenditure by the public authorities. They are as follows. A. Public expenditure should promote the welfare of the society. B. Careful judgment should be exercised by the public authority and the electorate to ensure that the advantages of the public expenditure should exceed the cost and that the fund utilized by the government will be more conductive to social welfare than the same funds should if privately utilized. C. Public expenditure should be utilized in the order of priority of welfare, that is, the services which will bring about maximum welfare should be undertaken first. Professor Findlay Shiras has explained four canons of public expenditure. They are canon of benefit, canon of sanction, canon of economy, and canon of surplus. Now let's move to talk about the effects of public expenditure on production particularly. Just as taxation, other things being equal, should reduce production as little as possible, so the public expenditure should increase it as much as possible, according to Professor Dalton. The effects of public expenditure on production can be evaluated by examining its effects on the following effects upon ability to work, save and invest, effects upon, upon willingness to work, save and invest, and effects upon diversification of economic resources as between different uses and localities. Now, I am going to present to you some model questions. 1. What is the importance of public expenditure? Two. Explain developmental and non-developmental expenditure. 3. What are the canons of public expenditure? 4. Explain Wagner's hypothesis of public expenditure. 5. Explain peacock Wisman hypothesis of public expenditure. 6. How does public expenditure affect the economy? 7. What are the causes for increasing public expenditure? and finally distinguish between revenue expenditure and capital expenditure so this is the end of this chapter the next chapter will be related to public revenue thank you very much for your attention